Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. This daily devotional time is meant to be an encouragement to your heart. Each day we look at an aspect of God's character. We've spent 31 days together now, and each couple of days we take something that the Bible says about who God is, we break it down, and we try to understand it because the Bible tells us that when times are tough, we are to set our hearts and minds on the person of God and the things of God. So thank you for joining me. The last time we were together, we talked about how we can enjoy a relationship of peace with God. And we talked about how this happens as we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Once that happens, the battle is over. We are no longer at war with God, but rather we're in a relationship of peace and intimacy, actually a family type relationship where God literally invites us to call him Abba Father. And of course, once we've made peace with God relationally through Jesus Christ, then we can experience a deep inner peace through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So the Holy Spirit is the one who assures us of God's tender love and care for us. And even though chaos swirls about us in this world, there will always be trouble. Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. No matter what happens all around us, we are anchored on the rock of our salvation in Christ. And there is a peace that comes from our faith and from knowing that we are eternally secure in God's love. This is what brings great hope and joy to our hearts. One of my favorite passages about the promise of God's peace to those who walk by faith is found in Philippians 4. So I'd love to walk us through some of these passages in Philippians 4 today. Philippians 4 verses 4 through 7 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love that it starts by saying rejoice, because <clears throat> rejoicing is an expression of inner joy, which is actually a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy is a kind of happiness that's actually an inward response to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not dependent on external circumstances. It's really dependent on a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is what is the cause for rejoicing. Verse 5 said, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. I love that. The Lord is at hand. What great news. Jesus actually has brought us near to the heart of God. He is compassionate and caring. He sees our circumstances. He knows the pain that sin and suffering bring into our lives. And so he tells us not to be anxious. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. It's interesting, the Greek word for anxious literally means to be pulled apart into different directions. And isn't that exactly how we feel when we worry? We feel pulled apart between faith and fear. One hope pulls us one way, fear pulls us the other way. The old English word for worry literally means to strangle. And that's kind of how we feel, right? When we worry, we feel like we're being strangled uh, by all kinds of anxieties. And then there's physical consequences to that. We get headaches and back pains and ulcers and indigestion and shortness of breath and depression. It really affects our bodies when we worry. So God exhorts us not to be anxious about anything, but in everything, he says that we are to pray. He says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know, prayer is just simply talking to God. It's just talking to him. The Archbishop Richard Trent once said, Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. It is laying hold of his highest willingness. I love that prayer also involves the whole Trinity. You know, we pray to God the Father. We pray through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the one who enables us to come freely to the Father. And then we pray in the Holy Spirit. And I love that Paul actually uses 
three different words to describe prayer. He talks about making our requests known to God, which is the prayer of supplication. And he also talks about thanksgiving because prayer involves multiple kinds of conversation. In some aspects of prayer, we're expressing adoration. Some were expressing thanksgiving. And some were expressing worship and some were bringing our requests to him. But whenever we find ourselves feeling worried or anxious, what we need to do is get alone with God and worship him. You know why worship is so critical to anxiety? It's because we need to lift our eyes above our circumstances and we need to see his greatness and his majesty. And when we do that, we get a fresh perspective on our problems. And this is what this daily devotional time has been about. In a time that is so anxiety ridden, so fraught with uncertainty, so concerning regarding health and safety, there's every reason to feel anxious, except for the fact that we do what the Bible tells us to do. We turn our eyes up to God in worship. We remember who he is. We praise him and thank him for his greatness. And in doing that, there's a calm that settles over us, a stability, a security. We anchor ourselves to the rock of our salvation in Christ, and our anxiety fades, and we begin to feel strengthened for the storms, equipped. Sometimes we make the mistake when we feel anxious or we have a lot of things that are bothering us. We have that we run the mistake of running to God and then immediately just telling him, not only telling him all of our problems, but telling him exactly what he needs to do to fix all our problems. But when we actually begin our prayer times with a time of worship and thanksgiving, we begin to remember that God is God and that he is sovereign over all things. And when we remember who he is by praising his character, And then we remember how trustworthy he's been with our lives by thanking him for his faithfulness. Then we have a fresh perspective in even how we bring our requests to him. Because it seems that somewhere between the recitation of his character and the recollection of his past faithfulness, we are now able to agree that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts greater than our thoughts. And it's likely now that when we bring our supplications to him, we bring our requests to him, we won't actually tell him how to fix our problems, but rather we'll lay our problems at his feet and invite him into them and trust him to guide us to the best possible resolution. You know, it, it, it most often God works in ways that completely defy human reasoning and he works in ways that maximize the glory that he gets for himself. And so that is the greatest blessing that we receive when we pray. And listen to what Paul says. This blessing comes as a result. He says in verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, when we give our hearts to Christ, we experience peace with God, but then we experience the peace of God as another gift or fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, this doesn't mean that our lives become free of any turmoil or that we never have trouble in our lives. That's not what that means. What it means is that we experience this inner assurance of God's presence and comfort in the midst of difficulty. Having peace with God changes everything that in how we live every day because we have security to trust him for his best purposes for our future. We can depend on him in the hard times of our lives. He gives us his wisdom for the really difficult decisions and also showing us how to bring order out of chaos. He assures us of his eternal love and tender care. He gives us grace to navigate challenging relationships. He gives us deep rest as we surrender our souls, even when we don't understand how everything's going to work out. We have peace because we learn how to trust in the character of God and then the peace that he has provided to us through Jesus Christ. And we receive that and we receive that from also his Holy Spirit. The point is that experiencing the peace of God in the midst of life's challenges is cause for rejoicing. Isn't it? When we experience the peace of God in the midst of challenging circumstances, doesn't it just make your heart erupt in joy? It's cause for rejoicing. 
This is the peace that comes from the simple joy of fellowship with Christ. It's the peace that comes with the assurance that everything will turn out well in the end, that God has a plan that he will triumph over all unrighteousness. There will be a time in the future when there will be peace on earth. For sure, that day is coming. There will be a time when peace will have no end on earth. Isaiah talks about that in in Isaiah 9-7. He says, Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So this is a gift of his grace to us through faith. Now that the war is over, we can come out of the jungle, as we talked about last time we were together, and enjoy the peace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I love how this passage ends in in verse 9. He says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So I think it's important to reimagine peace. You know, peace is not necessarily a place of stillness and beauty and solitude, but it is a state of relationship with God, that we are brought near to the heart of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we are brought near, God fills us with his peace through his Holy Spirit. And when we experience peace in the midst of really challenging circumstances, it causes our hearts to erupt in joy. So I want to just pray for you today that God might fill your heart with peace and in the midst of that peace, you would have real joy. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for reminding us that it is your peace in the midst even of turmoil that brings us joy. And we know it's a supernatural thing. We know that it's not a peace because there's necessarily quiet or there is not conflict or not things to be anxious about, but it's as we bring our anxieties to you that you replace it with peace and trust because you are so faithful and your character is full of peace. We're so grateful that we can think about who you are each day and by worshiping you, our hearts are filled with the contentment of knowing you and being in a right relationship with you. I pray you'd fill our hearts with peace today and we ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. So thank you for joining me today. This wraps up our our exploration of God's peace, but tomorrow we're going to talk about the righteousness of God. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.